Can everybody everybody hear me? Yes. yes, I hope you're all ready for the final exam. Yes. Uh, just to mention, today we have a, a special lecture of about a half an hour that I'll be giving before my normal lecture. And uh, the subject of it is time travel paradox. My mother is younger than I am. And my name is Ira Mark Egdahl, also known as Uncle Albert. It is now my pleasure to introduce our special guest, someone who is recognized as the greatest scientist in the modern era. Uh. <laughs> my name is Albert Einstein. Perhaps you've heard of me. Isn't it strange that I, who have written unpopular books, am such a popular fellow? You can even get a bobblehead doll of me at McDonald's. <laughs> but I can tell you with fame I have become stupider and stupider, which is a common experience. Oh, I apologize for my accent. It comes and goes. <laughs> the most beautiful thing we can experience is the mysterious. It is the source of all true art and all true science. Perhaps it is this curiosity with the mysteries of the universe which has interested people in my theories. So today we will talk about one aspect of my theory which involves the nature of time. And for this, we will tell the story of Mama Kvetch. Mama Kvetch gives birth to a daughter who she names Griselda. Griselda grows to be a beautiful young girl. And then she has a second child, a boy who she names <laughs> Rotgut. And unfortunately, Griselda and Rotgut are always fighting, always arguing. And then they go off to school, and they graduate, and they cannot find a job because of the economy. So they stay at home with Mama Kvetch, and they are driving her crazy. I want to go to Florida, they complain. Who ate my ice cream? I'll clean up tomorrow. I need a bigger room. Get off my computer. Mama Kvetch is going crazy. She needs to do something, so she tells her children, I just have to get out of the house. I'm leaving. You can wash and cook and clean and feed the crocodile yourselves. So Mama Kvetch signs up for a trip on a rocket ship to a distant star. And this will tell us about time. The question is, what happens to time in Mama Kvetch's rocket as she goes into outer space and back? Mama's time, according to my theory of special relativity, Mama's time runs slower than time on Earth due to the rocket's motion. And the slowing factor is given by the formula, the square root of 1 minus v squared, where v is a relative velocity as a percentage of the speed of light. What we have discovered with special relativity is time does not go by at the same rate for everyone. For example, if I am moving at everyday speed with respect to you, you see my time running slower than yours by a very, very small amount. That's why we don't notice it. For example, here is my watch. Imagine we both have super accurate watches. Right now, your watch and my watch are ticking off the same amount of time in the same time intervals. But if I move with respect to you, you see my watch running slower than your watch. This is a very, very small effect, billions of billions of seconds or less, but it is real. Now, if I were able to travel at 87% the speed of light, which is some 580 million miles an hour, 
then you would find that my watch is running at only half the rate of your watch. And so, for every second which ticks off on your watch, only a half second ticks off on mine. So let us see how this affects Mama Kvetch's rocket trip. The principle that was discovered, that I discovered, that is the heart of special relativity and all else follows from it, is the fact that the speed of light is absolute. It is approximately 670 million miles an hour. Light always travels at the same speed, in a vacuum. No matter what the speed of the source or the speed of the observer. You see, I am losing my accent sometimes. <laughs> imagine a automobile with its headlights on and imagine the lights are approaching you. You measure that light, of course, as around 670 million miles an hour, the speed of light C. What if, for example, that automobile was racing towards you at hundreds of millions of miles an hour? You would still measure the light from that, those headlights from that car of only 670 million miles an hour. Imagine you could take that car and put it into reverse and it sped away from you at hundreds of millions of miles an hour. You would still measure that light speed as being the same, 670 million miles an hour. So no matter what your speed relative to the source of the light, <coughs> no matter what the speed of the source of the light, the light always travels, is always measured at the same speed, the speed of light C. Okay, now we will see that this has a profound meaning when it comes to our understanding of time. <coughs> to understand this, let's look at a golf cart. And let us imagine we have two golf carts that always travel at the same speed. One is on the left and one is on the right, the green and the, the uh, red person. The question is, if they have a race to go from the start line here to the finish line, who will win? One goes straight across, the other one goes diagonal. Who will win? The one that goes straight. The one that goes straight, yes, the one in green. Let us see the race. <coughs> The one in green wins, as you all said. Obviously, why? Green crosses the finish line. I'm sorry, what? Shorter, shorter, shorter. shorter distance. Yes, a longer diagonal path means it takes a longer time. Very simple. Now, let us consider a thought experiment, an imaginary clock which we call a light clock, which is made up of two mirrors. One mirror is on the top and one mirror is on the bottom and there is a single photon of light, a photon is a particle of light, going back and forth between the two mirrors. Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. The clock goes tick when the photon hits the top mirror and talk when it hits, talk when it hits the bottom. So it goes tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. Okay? Now, the question is, what if we have a stationary light clock, which I show in the foreground, and we have a moving clock, which I show in, I'm sorry, yes, a moving clock, clock, which I show in the foreground. The stationary clock is in the background. You must forgive me for mixing things up. I am 132 years old. <laughs> so, we have the clock closest to us moving. And as it moves, the photon has to go in a diagonal path as it moves. Now, I will show you this with my photon right here. This we, we imagine is a photon. And this is my light clock. My hands, I reimagine, are the mirror. And the, if I'm standing still, the photon goes tick tock, tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. But as I'm moving, you see it goes like this. See that? It's still going up and down as I see it. But as you see it, because I'm moving with respect to you, it is going in a diagonal path. Do you see the diagonal path? Can you see it? Look at the photon only. Can you see it's actually moving diagonally? Yes. yes, that is obvious? Good. So the point is the photon is moving in a diagonal path in the moving clock and in a straight up and down path in the stationary clock. What does that mean? It means nothing according to what he said. <laughs> ah, wait, you'll see. It does mean something. What would you hear from the two clocks? From the, exactly. 
Yes, the, the top clock will go tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. What does the bottom clock do? Tick tock. No, it does. Yes, so the bottom clock goes tick tock, tick tock. It runs at a slower rate. The question is, why? It's taking a longer path. The bottom clock, the photon, has to go diagonal, which is a much longer path than straight up and down, you see? And we said that light always travels at the same speed, yes? Yes. So just like the golf cuts, same speed, longer path means longer time. So from our perspective, the photon in the moving clock travels on a longer diagonal path. But at the same speed, c, the speed of light, as the stationary clock. So to travel at a longer path means it must take longer to reach from the bottom of the mirror to the top. So what we hear from the bottom clock, from the moving clock, is a slower time. Longer path at the same speed means a longer time, just like in the golf cart. So the moving clock ticks slower than the stationary clock. What this means is that time itself slows down with relative motion. This is true for all aspects of time, for human aging, for biological <coughs> events, for subatomic particle aging. All aspects of time slow down with relative motion. Now, is this true? 